Hey friends, what's up? Jeff Heath coming at you with a brand new video. And today we're going to go over my editing process for the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis. I was just up in the Yukon for three weeks praying. The one shot I wanted to get was a shot of the Northern Lights. And I had a few opportunities. And uh, the first one was okay. The second one was better. And the third one was exactly what I was going for. So we're gonna edit two of these experiences, the better one and the best one, just to show you a little bit of the difference. This is the first time I've edited the Aurora Borealis. This is the first time I've looked at the whole process. So I thought I'd take you along the journey to see how it all went. So let's jump into Lightroom and see what we can do. All right, here is the first image here. This was the Aurora Borealis uh, and the wonderful sky. This is up on Dome Hill in Dawson City. Uh, so as you can see, there's some uh, streaks here, either satellites or little meteors streaking across the sky here. This is what my camera took the raw image of. Uh, this is exactly how it looked right out of camera. So as you can see on the bottom here, we have our northern lights. It was a quarter moon. Uh, over here in the corner is a quarter moon so that was a little bit different but you know I thought it added to the photo a little bit you can see some of the clouds uh, and mountains down here with the outline and silhouettes of the trees so where do I start first uh, the first thing I always do is check my color temperature uh, so that's just over here in the top right corner and it's nighttime so we want to make it a little bit more blue so we're gonna change that a little bit to have a little more blue in the sky there. Usually in the Aurora, there's a bunch of greens, some aquas, and you can see a little bit of purples up here. Uh, so what I like to do as well is go to my hue and saturation. And now this is kind of where we have a little bit of fun. So as you can see, as we play with this hue, we're changing a little bit of that green color here. So it all this is all kind of personal preference on how you wanna do it, uh, but uh, the Aurora typically is a little bit more greenish in color, uh, so you don't want to skew too far from that. Uh, see, as you're changing the colors here, we're going from a purple sky to like an aqua sky. Uh, but I like to keep that blue, you know, pretty good. We're going to play with some of the magenta here, the purple, sorry. And then we are going to, so all we're doing is kind of tweaking things around a little bit here. Uh, and then we'll go to saturation and again we're going to play with the greens so we're going to brighten up that green color here get oh there we go we're getting some of that pop of the orange coming up into the sky there now too so we're turning out so if we switch it this way on the aqua and we turn it this way we're getting a little bit of that pinkish colors coming out in the aurora there we go and we'll play with the luminance a little bit as well. So this is all in your HSL color here. We're gonna just have a quick look here. There's not a lot to it. It's pretty simple. It's just about personal preference and how you want things to look. So what can happen is if you look now over here, we've totally muted the greens out. Uh, and But if you go this way, you're gonna blow them out. So it's a fine line of finding what looks natural and what is breaking apart the image. Uh, the other thing I like to do now is then adjust the curves adjustment here on my tone curve. So again, we're gonna try to make the darks darker and the lights lighter. Again, this is a nighttime photo, so we wanna make sure that we're playing with those colors well to make it look as natural as possible. So what we're gonna do is uh, goof around here with the sharpening next. Um, what we're gonna do is bump up our sharpening just a tiny bit. But what you can do is you can isolate just the darks and the lights by holding Option and putting the mask and you'll see that we're gonna start isolating some of the black and the whites here. And that just sharpens up some of these stars in the background here, makes them pop a little bit. So. Again, personal preference, you wanna leave some of that. There's lots of stars in the sky, so don't go too crazy because you'll lose some of the detail in the stars. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. We got So we'll do a little bit of noise reduction here. Again, not too much because we want to keep some of the details in those stars there. 
You can tell I had a little bit of a longer shutter with these star streaks here. I'm okay with that because the Aurora looked really nice. And now we're just going to play around again with our saturation here. It looks a little bit blown out to me now. We've goofed around with it. There we go. That's popping the colors back in. A little more blue in there. You can see here now that the clouds and the mountains back here have popped really nice. The color is nice and even. So that is pretty good for me for this image. I'm going to use the healing brush, just really small. And we're going to take out these little streaks here. There we go. There's that one gone. There's one over here. We're going to heal that. Like that. Maybe just a little closer because that's going to look a little weird. Go up this way. That's good. And then I think that's pretty good for me. Again, less is more for me in these photos. So we'll have a little before and after here. So there's a side by side. Uh, you can see that it's kind of, we got rid of this one, got rid of that one. It's kind of streaking up here a little bit. I wonder if we can bring in some of this purple here. Let's have a look here. Let's see if we can bring some of that color in there from the haze. We might have to play with the temperature here just a little bit. There, oh, there we go. Now it's popping. All right, there we go. Okay, so we're bringing up the, t the warming it up a little bit. So now we got some of this orange, sorry, a little pinky purple here. Let's play around with that color there. See what we can't bring out in that color there. Just playing around here. This is all just kind of guessing here and there on how we want to, oh, there we go, get some pop in the color there. So again, if you do too much, you're going to see the image start to break up a little bit. We don't want to do that. We want to keep the image nice and crisp and clear. I th oh, that looks way better. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. We got a nice little streak right here as well. We'll get rid of this here. Just like that. I am really happy with how that looks. That looks great to me. So we got the nice silhouette here. We got the mountains in the background with the moon over here. And that is pretty good. I think, I think, I think. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So this was the second best night I had with the Aurora. Uh, I really like this photo as well that I took. Um, turned out really well. Happy with how this, you can see a little bit of long exposure here with these people, but I just like the contrast of the people in the fire and, you know, the stars here. So let's scroll over to the actual shots that I was super stoked on. Okay, so here is, we were in Faroe, Yukon Territory, and we stayed at this cute little cabin right here. And it was probably one or two in the morning when the sky started to explode with the northern lights. So I was, this was the first night I actually saw it with my naked eye where you could actually see it moving in, in the sky, which is pretty incredible. So uh, this was the image I took here. I had a little light over here on the left on the cabin to kind of light up the cabin here. So we're gonna play with this image here and see what we can do. So again, first thing I'm gonna do is just play around a little bit with my temperature. So I'm cooling it down a little bit, trying to keep some of that color in the sky there. I'm gonna switch it around this time. I'm gonna boost up my curves here and then crush my blacks. So there we go, that looks pretty good. I like that. And now we're gonna play with our hue and saturation again uh, and our luminance. So we wanna pop some of those greens a little bit depending on which way we want to go. So I like a little more greenish color to the Aurora. There we go. We'll play around with some of the sky back here. We're gonna add a little more blue into the sky. Uh, we have some of these pink tones over here, which is great. Uh, so we want to see if we can boost some of those pink colors in the sky. Let's see where these colors are coming in. So again, it's just kind of playing with each of the sliders seeing which way things go oh that's changing the cabin color there a little i like that a little bit yep that's good uh, let's go to the saturation now so we're gonna bump up our greens a bit more 
change the sky color. There we go. We're getting some. If you look up here, over up here, the uh, sky color is just changing. The aurora just changing a little bit to more blue color on the top there. Let's see if we can play with this purple color. It's not doing a whole lot. And then the magenta is not doing a whole lot. And we're watching the cabin as well and how that looks. Okay, that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just check the luminance here. So the luminance is kind of showing the brightness of the colors there. So you can see it's kind of getting some of those highlights popping a little bit, which I actually really like that. Let's see if we can hold that in good. Okay. That looks good. And now I am going to go over to our noise reduction. So we're just going to zoom in a little bit here and check our noise reduction here. We just want to do a little bit, get rid of some of that grain there. And again, in the sharpening, we're going to hit Option. And we're going to try to sharpen some of those stars just a little bit. Okay, that looks awesome. Uh, and so what we're going to do now as well is because we have this big highlight here in the cabin here, it's kind of distracting a little bit. Uh, we're going to go to our mask tool here and we're going to select our brush. Uh, and that brush is fine with that size. What we're going to do is take the exposure down one whole stop and what we're going to try to do is tone down this cabin here. Let's bring our flow and density up here a little bit because it's a little doing a whole lot especially right here is where we want to kind of tone it down a bit there we go so we want to still show the cabin here a bit we can play with the temperature a bit here we can warm it up because i want a nice little contrast that looks good take some of those highlights down just a tiny bit so again, we don't we want the center of attention, the focus to be the northern lights up here. Uh, but this cabin adds a little bit of, I think, a nice little dynamic thing. We're gonna add one more brush here. We're gonna do a new mask. We're gonna select a brush. And this time we're going to add the exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlights here on the edge of this cabin. Brighten up the edges here. That looks good. That looks good. I really like that. And now we're just going to do a little bit of healing on this thing. Again, for me, less is more. So we're just going to take down this brush just a little bit here. We're going to heal this streak right here so it's not as distracting like that. Any other streaks we see? No, that looks pretty good. So let's look at the before and after here. So as you can see, we've just kind of changed the colors a little bit, added a little highlights here, added some color. We changed the color of the cabin here. But this is this is the shot I was really wanting to get when I was up in the Yukon. I'm super happy with how this turned out. That's the whole joy of photography. You never know what you're going to get. And sometimes they're just happy little accidents, as Bob Ross used to say. So I'm really happy with the color, the contrast, the look of this photo. Just kind of pops and gives you that dynamic coloring in the cabin here and the sky and the blues and the purples and the greens. Super cool. Really excited. The only thing I would have changed, this is the first time, like I said, with doing the Aurora Borealis. I would have had um, my ISO a little bit more and my shutter speed a little shorter just so I'd remove some of these light streaks here. But that's a learning process. This is the first time that I ever did the Aurora Borealis, and I was super pumped when I got this photo. I also did a time lapse of it, which turned out really good. I'll put a little link at the end here of the Aurora Borealis swinging through uh, with this scene here. But yeah, I'm super happy. I don't mind grain in my photo. I usually use presets uh, that have film and photo uh, looks to them. But yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. Well, that's it, friends. That was just kind of a real time edit of the Aurora Borealis this is the first time I photographed them like that and the first time I've edited them uh, in this style and this look and uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out this is just a few of the little things that I did to make this image pop this is the way I do it 
I'm sure there's experts on the Aurora that know how to do it way better, but that's how I've done it. And I'm really happy with the results and how they turned out. So I hope you enjoyed. Would love if you hit that subscribe button. Uh, give me a like and a comment. If you have any questions below, we'd love to answer them for you. Thanks again for watching. Catch you later. Thank you.